Yeah, so some of you have been in Jakarta, so we had a new steering committee. Uh, the next slide is that in 2018, uh, we were formally granted the UN special consultative status and uh, it, uh, it meant a lot and also gave us a lot of uh, credibility and access to UN processes. Uh, as you will see from the next slide, we have used this in, uh, in many ways by, uh, for instance, uh, our steering committee member of ACE uh, having uh, um, addressing high level political forum uh, at the UN in 2019. And then uh, we have also worked uh, with several of our members to launch uh, the Dynamic Coalition on the Sustainability of Journalism and News Media. Uh, at the International Governance Forum in uh, 2019. Last year, we had uh, quite a successful emergency appeal for journalism and uh, media support. And this is something to talk about tomorrow as well. It actually reads a bit as a, as a manifesto of our community. And I think that we could use it to, to kind of make uh, uh, four or five basic uh, statements around what do we see as the as the main uh, uh, policy and advocacy avenues for our community to address over the next uh, period. We have also celebrated our 15th uh, anniversary and uh, paid tribute to both uh, late Bettina Peters uh, and uh, Jeanette Mini. Um, Jeanette and Bettina unfortunately passed away, um, Jeanette in 2016 and Bettina in uh, 2020. Here, uh, just a couple, a short note. Um, we've uh, talked about establishing Jeanette Mini Award and we still have that plan, but we would like to give the first one when we can meet with uh, all of our members from, from different regions. So we, will, we are postponing that for opportunity where we can uh, meet with more uh, people in person. And uh, I want to pass the mic quickly to David Quinn from Thompson Foundation that has set up uh, the Bettina Fund. Uh, and uh, uh, he will just give us a quick uh, uh, um, note on uh, how you can uh, join their efforts to keep uh, the ideas and commitments that Bettina had alive. Thank you, Mira. Um, so very quickly, just to let you know, as some of you uh, may have uh, been in the discussion that we had some time ago, uh, late last year on the establishment of the Bettina Fund, it is uh, now open for business. Uh, we have established a pilot program in Kenya uh, with a program partner there, uh, Barasa Media. It has a focus as was uh, our intention to maintain the kind of initiatives and passions that Bettina brought to bear in all of her work. So its aim is to support the development of uh, women media leaders in Africa, starting with a high impact intense mentoring program by African women leaders for uh, Kenya going forward over the course of the next year. We hope to expand this out as we move forward into other countries uh, in the continent. Thank you. Thank you, David. And I believe I didn't mention for those uh, who are new to the network or didn't know Bettina and uh, Jeanette. Bettina was uh, GFMD's first executive director. Uh, Jeanette uh, was a long-term uh, member of this community, um, a big fighter for freedom of expression and media in South Africa. Uh, and um, member of the GFMD steering committee. Just quickly, we recently uh, launched our media development fundraising guide um, and Anne-Marie will talk later just a bit about uh, what we uh, are doing, helping uh, small and medium-sized organizations seeking funding. And, uh, and some of you um, have been also involved with uh, our, um, our project, the International Media Policy and Advisory Center, GFM The Impact, that is launched together with our partners, donors, and of course, members uh, to convene donors, practitioners, and academia to have a space where we can uh, uh, share what works, what doesn't, um, uh, what are the, the pressing uh, issues and challenges uh, that we are all, uh, all facing.